welcome back to this introduction to the robotics using the copula sim so i am dr prashant dupadhyay and today we will going to talk about the bubble rope tutorial so this will be the bubble rope tutorial part 2 in bubble rope tutorial part 1 we have talk about how to design the bubble rope body so you can see that in a previous part 1 of a video we have designed this bubble rope body where we have designed the bubble rope the body of a bubble rope then we have created a sensing nose then we have created a right motor and left motor and we have joined and when we have played this what we have seen that our bubble rope body was falling down so in this bubble rope tutorial part 2 we will going to do more steps that are been required to make this bubble rope to be a static and it should not fall down so what we will be doing we will be creating a bubble rope which is stable so as we have seen in a previous that when we run the simulation we have noticed that the bubble rope robot was falling down okay that means it was being shifted at the backward so still we required some point of contact on the floor so that our bubble rope should not fall down so what we have to do is that we have to add a small slider or it is also known as the castle at the back side of a bubble rope body so that my bubble rope should be stable first what we will going to do is that we will going to design a small slider that is known as the castle and this thing we will going to create in a new scene so uh, we will go into the new scene and we will going to select a new scene like this and we will going to create a sphere of a diameter 0.05 so we will go on to the add primitive shape then we will going to click on sphere and then i will going to give a diameter of 0 0.05 okay and again we have to make the sphere that the property of the sphere is that it should be a collidable measurable and detectable and then we will going to rename it to the slider so how we will going to rename it we will going to double click on this and then we will going to give the name as a slider and then we will going to press the end so let me show you this step on the software part so we will go on to the file new scene here we will go on to the add button we will go on to the primitive shape then we will click on the sphere and what the diameter we have to choose we have to choose the diameter 0 0.05 click ok now double click on this sphere go on to the common property and make this object special properties as a collidable detectable and measurable double click on it give the name slider enter it okay so we have created a slider here now the next step what we have to do is that we have to make a material as a no friction material how we will going to do uh, we will go into the slider again we will going to double click on this teal color shape we will go on to this dynamic properties dialog box and from here we will going to see this added material option so when ever we will go into this added material option we will going to find that wherever the word friction is been written we have to make it as a zero okay so that there should be no friction what we have to do wherever you are finding friction word okay you have to put it value zero there in a friction material properties okay so here you can see in a bullet properties we have got a friction word okay so we will going to make it as a zero here in the ode property you have got the friction word we will make it zero and newton properties we will going to make it zero okay so let me move to the software so we will go on to the slider then show dynamic properties added material and then you can see here in a bullet properties we have got this i will going to make a zero friction this zero okay ode property i will going to make it zero okay then you can see newton property we have got here zero kinetic friction we can make it zero and close it now the next step what we have, have to do is that now you want to link the slider with rest of the robot so what we have to do in this we have to add a force sensor okay how we will going to add a force sensor we will go on to the add button and then we will going to click on the force sensor so you can see a green color cylindrical structure will going to come which will, will be at the bottom of the sphere then what we have to do we have to rename it as a connection and we have to shift it as 
0.05 so what we are trying to do is that uh, we are renaming it as a connection and then what we are doing we are shifting it by 0 0.05 on the z axis so we have got a position we will going to open a position dialog box and here we will going to enter 0 0.05 and then you will going to see that uh, this uh, slider which you have added okay or uh, uh, the on that slider we will going to make a connection and that connection will be at the top of the sphere and then we will going to connect this sphere back to the bubble room okay so once we have designed it, it we will going to attach the slider to the force sensor and then we will going to copy both object and then we will going to switch back to the scene one and then we will going to paste it okay so let me show this on the software part so i have to go on to the add button force sensor so you can see a force sensor it appears here okay i will going to double click on this rename it as a connection enter then i will going to click on position tab then i will going to click on position and along z coordinate we have to enter point zero now you can see this connection is now at the top of the slider now what we have to do is that again we have to make a parent child relationship between the slider and connection so what we will going to do first we will going to select a slider then we will going to press a control button from our keyboard and then we will going to select the connection and then we will going to select that meet last selected object as a parent so we have to select the slider then we will going to select a connection then add it make last selected object as a parent so you can see now slider is the part of a connection. now what we have to do we have to switch back to the scene one and we have to paste them okay so it will going to come like this and you will going to find it will be in the center of the bubble rope body so let me do it Control c switch to the this mode and now you can see it is in the center of the bubble rope body now what we have to do is that we have to shift the force sensor minus 0 0.07 along the absolute x-axis okay and then we will going to attach it to the robot body so we have to select the connection okay then we have to open the position dialog box and what we are doing we are shifting it minus 0 0.07 so we have an axis like this if you remember when you are going for the line chart and all you have the or a graph we have a zero value here then we have got a positive value in this direction and negative value in the this right so we are making it move backward side so when we are making it move backward side we have to give the position minus so we are entering minus 0 0.07 okay at a position so you will see this connection which we have created will going to come at the uh, last part of the bubble root body so let me do it so what we have to do we have to select this go on to the position tab and then we have to enter minus 0 0.07 enter now if i rotate it you can find now this bubble rope body okay the connection which we have made is at the last at the tail side of a bubble rope body again you can save your model okay and you can see here we are getting this z axis so therefore we are move when we are moving in this direction or this direction we are, that means we are talking about the x axis therefore we have make a change in the x axis now next step what we have to do is that we have to select the connection then we have to select the bubble rope we have to press the control button and then again we have to make a last selected object as a parent so now the connection will be the part of a bubble so we have to select the connection then bubble rope add it make last selected of the z as a pen now it is the part of a bubble rope okay uh, so let me play it what i am getting so now you can see that my bubble rope is moving backward side stop it control s so you can see when we press control s the scene is being saved so again as i have already shown you that if we are run the simulation now we can notice the slider sliding moving in relation to the robot body okay why it is happening is because both the object slider and bubble rope are colliding with each other and when they are colliding with each other they will going to move in this direction okay 
so this is the sum of the strange effect which we are getting so to avoid this uh, strange effect what we have to do is that we have to inform copulation that our uh, software that uh, these both object do not mutually collide with each other. so what we have to do is that we have to change the dynamic properties of the slider and the bubble rope so we when we are talking about the slider we will going to give the local spawn mass as a 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. and for the bubble rope we will going to give a local responded marks as a 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. so where the slider 1 are present at the bubble rope 0, 0 are present so they will not going to mutually collide with each other so for this what we have to do is that first we will going to click on the slider and then we will going to double click on the steel color shape and then we will go on to the show dynamic properties and you can find this local respond mask is written here so when we have to make it 0 0 0 we have to only uncheck this i'm opening this slider show dynamic property and i will going to uncheck this okay now same thing we have to do for the bubble rope we will going to click on the bubble rope and then again we will go on to the show dynamic property dialog box and we will going to uncheck the last four boxes bubble rope show dynamic property last four boxes okay now we will going to run the simulation again and now what we will going to notice is that bubble rope slightly moves even with the lock motor what we have done in the previous uh, video we have locked the motors okay now we have though we have made a that there should be a no movement uh because we have locked the motor still we will going to see that the stability of the bubble rope is not that much bubble rope was falling so we have uh, talk about that we will going to enter the inertia and mass okay but to make it stable first what we have done we have added a slider here so let me run it okay can you see still it is been moving that when we will going to run the simulation again we will going to notice that the bubble rope is slightly moving even we have locked the motor okay so this undesired effect which we are getting what we have to do we have to tightly link the mass and the inertia of a body okay and that involved into the non-static state so what we can do we can increase the mass and the inertia of a body so uh, we have got the step which we have to follow in which we will going to increase the mass and the inertia of a body if you are using a new version what you have to do is that you have to select the two wheels and the slider and then you have to increase the mass masses by the factor of eight okay so let me do this step so what we have to do first we have to select the two wheels and the slider that is left wheel and the right wheel and the slider and then we will go on to the tool option from there we will go into select a scene object properties and then we will going to see that we have got this masses coming so you can see there is the m multiplied by 2 for the selection and m divided by 2 for the selection only so what what we are doing we are multiplying it so we will going to click three times on this and now you will going to see that the mass which we are getting is roughly in the weight of 5.23 e minus 0 1 okay so we will going to do it so we have to select the so we have to select the right wheel left wheel and slider go on to the tools scene object properties okay show dynamic properties and here you can find m equal to m multiply by 2 one time two time and three times so you are getting something weight like this and click apply to selection so as i have already told you in the new version you have to increase the mass by the factor of eight Next step what we have to do we have to repeat this step for the inertia also so again we will going to select the right wheel left wheel and slider and again we will go on to the scene object properties and from here we will going to uh, go for this i equal to i multiply by 2 and we will going to click three times and now you can see that my inertia is also being increased so i will go on to this tool scene object properties show dynamic properties and i multiply by two one time two time and three time now you can see that i am getting some value 2.00 e minus 03 apply to selection okay again if you are going for the new version you have to 
have the inertia matrix of a three selected shape you have to scale that inertia and we will going to reset the target velocity item of a zero for both the motor now you can see that if i am running the simulation now my robot is not moving okay can you see it? that means now we have stable the our robot and our undesired effect the movement of a body of a this wheel is being not done okay it's like this that whenever you put uh, your vehicles you lock your vehicles okay or you just uh, uh, put it on the stand with the vehicles the vehicle uh, will start moving it okay that is the undesired effect okay so what do you have to do you have to make this uh, whenever you are putting the vehicle you have to put it on the stand now next step what we have to do is that we have to add a graph object to the bubble loop okay so in order to display it clearance distance so we will go on to the add button graph and then we will going to add a graph so we will go on to the add graph and we will going to add the graph here so you can see that we are getting a time graph which is now the next step which we have to do is that we have to attach the graph to the bubble loop and we have to set the absolute coordinates to 0 0 and 0 0.005 so we have to click on the graph then we will go on to this position tab and here we have to enter 0 0 and 0 0.005 it is very important click on graph position tab 0 0 and 0 0.005 and you have to rename this as a graph g should be small again we are doing all this because we will be using the script of it so that we should not get the error in it save your model now what we will going to do next is that we will going to add a pure primitive cylinder with the following dimension we will going to add 0 0.1 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 cylinder and what we want that these cylinder to be static that means they should not be influenced by the gravity or collision whenever the collision occur it should not fall okay so we want that it should be static okay so what we will going to do when we are talking about the static we will disable the body as a dynamic okay we are not making a cylinder which we are adding in the scene to be a movable okay and also what we want that our whenever the collision occurs okay our cylinder should be able to collide with this they should be able to measurable and they should have a property of a detectable so how you will going to do you will go on to the add primitive cylinder then you will going to enter the dimension 0 0.1 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 and you will going to see a cylinder will going to come in between the bubble row so i'm doing this step i go on add primitive shape cylinder 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 okay can you see a cylinder is here okay in between now what we want to do next step is that that we will going to disable body is a dynamic okay so we have to go on to the shape dynamic property and we also want that our uh, cylinder should be a collidable and measurable so we will going to click on cylinder and we will go on to the show dynamic property and body is dynamic we will going to disable then we will go on to the common property and then we will going to select the object special property as a collidable detectable and measurable now what we want we want that uh because we are going for this bubble loop uh, totally in which we want that this bubble loop will go and will go have a collision with the cylinder and will going to change their path okay so we don't want that this uh, robot should be moving freely in this ground okay so we will going to provide the different different uh, cylinders okay so it's up to you how many cylinders you want to take okay so we will going to take for example 10 cylinder or a 15 cylinder and we will going to make a round circle of that cylinders okay we will going to tell you how to do it okay so what we will be doing is that this type of structure we will going to make it what you can do just to show you this here i have got this cylinder I'm making this so what do you have to do first you can do what just select the cylinder and then select the position dialog and the hand will going to appear and now you can use your mouse and you can place your cylinder here see once you have not selected this uh, uh, position dialog box 
now you will be not able to move your cylinder okay so whenever you want to move the cylinder you have to select the cylinder and then you have to click on position dialog this hand will going to appear and then you will be able to move your cylinder since i want to make more number of cylinders here i will going to use a control c and control v option so i'm using control c and control v control v control v like this so let me make 11 cylinder okay so the first cylinder i've selected and now i'm selecting the second one then third fourth fifth sixth like this i'm continuing with all the cylinder seven eight okay because i'm counting from zero okay nine 10 11 okay uh, it's uh, up to you that how you want to arrange it okay you can arrange it in th this way you can just turn it like this and now you can select it and you can make it like this more okay you can arrange it like more like this so i've just done like this so it's up to you how you are arranging it okay so now we have got a cylinders our model is been associated with this cylinder okay i will want to save my model now what we have to do we have to finish the bubble rope as a model definition so we will going to go on to the bubble rope and then we will going to make bubble rope as a model so we will go on to the bubble rope and then we will going to select bubble rope object this is the model definition i'm making object as a model now you what we can see that uh, now we have got a model hierarchy and now we can add the two joints the proximity sensor and the graphs okay so we have to select these two joints that means right motor left motors then the proximity sensor and the graph and then what we want we want to enable the item ignore the by model bounding box and the model bounding box now we're going to ignore the two joint and the proximity sensor so what we are doing we are selecting the sensing nose right motor left motor and our graph okay then we will go on to the tool scene object properties common and ignore by a model bounding box and apply to selection so we have done till here okay so till here we have done the design the complete part of the bubble rope body now in the next lecture what we will going to do we will talk about the programming how to do the programming of it so how to make this bubble rope we have created a body okay all the structure has been created now we want that with the help of a programming can we make this bubble to move okay and whenever this bubble rope will going to find the cylinder in front of it it is capable of taking their own decision if capable of turning in the right direction or the left direction that will be done with the help of a programming so thank you i hope you have enjoyed this lecture and this is the part two of this bubble rope tutorial now we have got a part three and in that we will be talking about the programming of a, this bubble rope so thank you everyone <music>